companies have come out recently with statements about DNI as a result of the Black Lives Matter protests. So Politico and a number of organizations uh, have quoted you as saying, uh, if you do nothing to back that up by making change in your organization, then they're just words on a page. What specific recommendations do you have for organizations that come out with these statements? So I have several recommendations for organizations that come out with these statements. And, and I have actually these recommendations are for any organization. So whether you have a statement or not. Um, but the first is really that organizations really need to look internally at how they operate and what their organizational culture is. There's such a need, I think, for folks to feel like they're doing something and to relax, re react to this moment. And so we want to fix the problem. And for some organizations, fixing the problem is, you know, we're going to hire more African Americans. And for some other organizations, fixing the problem may be we need to expand our supplier diversity program. And, and I think what I, I'm suggesting is that before you ever get there, you need to understand what the problem is. Um, and the only way that you understand what the problem is, is to understand what's going on in your own company. Um, and so, you know, this moment in my mind, starts with some reflection and some self-reflection and some honest self-reflection as to why um, these things are not already happening. And it could possibly be um, that it isn't already happening because it's never been a focus, it's never been a priority. Um, but for some organizations, and a lot of organizations, it actually has been a focus and a priority, and they still, the movement is not happening. Um, and that suggests to me that there's some other things going on within organizations that leaders really um, need to take the time and the space to understand and address um, before they start with the other steps. And in my mind, those steps would be um, not only hiring of more African American employees um, or hiring of more African Americans, but really what are the pipelines that you have um, developed for those who are already within your organizations to move into other roles, um, to move into management and leadership roles. Um, so that, that's something that organizations, I believe, should be doing. I think organizations should be looking at if they have supplier diversity programs, um, looking at those programs really closely and seeing how is my money, how is that money being spent? Um, are, are, is there equity in the way that money is being spent? And what I mean by that is, you know, are you seeing a shift where your supply diversity numbers broadly may go be, you know, maybe it goes from 20% to say 30%, um, but that for particular businesses, that's actually not what we're seeing happen, right? That um, it could be that black owned businesses are actually seeing less of a spend while another group is seeing more of a spend. And so um, I, I think companies need to be looking at that and they need to be really making sure um, and ensuring that those businesses really do get an opportunity, not just to do the business that they're currently doing, but quite frankly, to increase the spend. Um, there needs to be, I think, a focus on developing of suppliers. You know, we, we're an industry that I think is really interesting in some cases in that we have this, um, we're complex and we're complicated and, and we all, you know, as industry, as the industry broadly, we talk about how complicated everything is that we do and how complex everything is that we do. Um, and yet then we want people to walk in and know exactly how to do it to suit you um, without getting any kind of intel, no feedback, no setup. Um, and I, I, I just believe that they, A, that's wrong. Um, I also think that that also is kind of contradictory to what you say you want to happen, right? That there is an opportunity for supplier development. And I think that companies can and should invest in supplier development. And, and that doesn't, they can do that themselves. They can partner with organizations like mine and others who have supplier development programs. Um, but that there has to be a recognition that people just don't show up ready um, without any kind of help, particularly in an industry that is so complicated, that has so many lines of business, so many places, touch points for people, um, high rates of capitalization required, high rates of bonding and insurance required. Like we've got to do more um, to get folks involved um, as, or as companies, if, if that's something that we have a priority. Um, and then I would say, look, I, I believe that companies should be looking at who their leadership teams are and making sure that there are pi pipelines for African Americans to be in senior leadership positions, that they are looking at board members and making sure that they are also, like, when they're doing board searches, making sure that there is a diverse candidate pool um, in that board search um, and not accept somebody saying that you can't find someone, send them back. 
because you can look yes. look harder. <laughs> yes. um, and then I think the final thing is um, we need to do more to invest in our students. I think our industry does a tremendous job investing in um, STEM programs locally. But what we know is that the cost of college education um, is one, it's, it's one of the few things where the cost is like, you know, it's, and, and I think I read some point, like 1400% increase in the cost of college education over a 20 year span or whatever that is. It's higher and faster than any other sector, um, period, right? The cost of higher education. And so we also know that a lot of students and particularly students of color um, leave school because they can't afford it. Right. Um, and so if we as an industry are interested in getting more of our students into STEM careers, mm -hmm. um, then we need to support that, right? And we need to support that in a way with our money, right? Helping kids um, with scholarships, but also, and even more so in my, in my opinion, making sure that those same students have um, a, the same opportunity for internships, externships, and co-ops as everyone else does. And that means, in my mind, that if a company has 10 internships a year, they should make sure that they're diverse candidates in those internships and that they should be deliberate about that and not just the, these are the 10 best kids that we found at this one school. Um, just like you would want a diverse pool for a candidate pool for a hire, I think the same is true for internships and, and those kinds of career development opportunities. So yeah. in my mind, those are all the things that companies should be focusing on. Um, I've heard you say that equity should come first, uh, inclusion second, and diversity third. Can you please explain your thinking around this? Yeah, I think we we get it backwards um, in some way when we start with hiring. I um, mean, I think it goes back to my previous comment about like we need to start with what's going on in our organizations first. And, and part of that is around do you have an equitable and inclusive culture, um, which means is it fair? Is it really fair? Not is it not not just do we say it's fair, right? Nice. Um, but is it really? Um, and that means when we look at how we hire, if a company is doing downsizing or layoffs, um, promotional opportunities, are people judged in the same kind of way? Um, and you know, you've seen enough studies that suggest that that's actually not the truth. If you look at gender studies, that will tell you um, how we may characterize a woman um, as being a man as being assertive. Uh, we may characterize a woman with the same kind of traits as being aggressive. Um, right. And those kinds of words absolutely impacts your opportunity to move forward in an organization. Um, and so I think those, when I say equity, those kinds of things are the first things that we need to be rooting out in our organization. Um, then we start talking about inclusion, which is right, when we, when we as leaders say that we want our employees to bring their whole selves to work, what exactly does that look like? Um, and is that, and, and, and do you have a culture that actually supports that idea? that if you have a meeting and everyone's in the meeting and folks of all levels, are all people heard in the same kind of way? Um, or if some people, their opinions really are left out or we're not, we're not really interested in what they think. Are we an organization that says that, that um, culturally decides that the way we've always done it is the only that way that we're going to do it? Um, and so even though we say we want new ideas, actually we reject every new idea right and yeah. that that's clearly a dynamic that i think you would hear a lot of young people say happen yeah right um and so when i talk about um these things i think that this is all under this idea of getting your house in order first do you have an equitable workplace place um are your policies and procedures um looking for that and measuring for that um and do you see the results of that work is your workplace really inclusive and psychologically safe do people feel like they can contribute um, in a way that's valued and that they are received that's valued. Um, do we understand if there are biases and microaggressions and all kinds of things baked into our systems that we need to kind of unpack? Um, I think that stuff has to happen first and then start hiring. Um, because otherwise what happens is you hire people and they actually, it's, it's exhausting, they don't wanna stay. Yep. And then we just have this hamster wheel um, of people coming in and out and coming in and out and leaders trying to understand, well, I don't understand what the problem is. We just need to get more people in STEM. We need to get more students interested in energy. Um, we need to do that, but none of that um, is worth anything if you don't take care of the other stuff first. <laughs>